few things handy. I've got some silver foil on my tray, um, which I'm going to put the shaving foam onto. I've got my white leather pieces. Um, this is our eco white leather. Um, we will be selling these cut pieces available on the website. Um, move my scissors out of the way. Anything that you're not um, too fussed about having move out of the way. And I've got some sponges handy for cleaning. And I'm going to put some extra grease proof paper around my cutting mat as well um, so that when I come to take it off and wipe the um, die off it's also very handy to have some kitchen towel around so I'm going to prepare a couple of sheets ready uh, just so that I've got those to one side before I start and gloves so as I say it is quite messy the other thing that's useful to have is something pointy. I tend to use this uh, little nail um, or an old hair comb is quite good for making the marbling effect. And I've got just a plastic knife or um, a spoon, teaspoon is handy. To, it's something that you want to be able to drip the um, dye off. So I have here um, yellow and ochre that we'll use on this today um, and we'll see how that comes out. I've done it before with gold and with putting other colours. So think about your colour base as well. So we'll just try a simple one to demonstrate it today so that hopefully you'll be able to see. Remember as well that where the yellow and red do mix and blend you're going to get a third colour which is the orange. I've got a little bit of uh, shaving foam there, so I'm just going to spread it out a little bit. And this is where the foil comes in handy, it gives you a little bit of a base but also you can kind of uh, keep your mess to a minimum. And then I'm going to just put some drips. So with these water based it's a good idea to really give them a good shake before you start to make sure the pigments all mixed in together. I'm just going to pour a tiny bit onto my edge here and then I'm going to just flicker it down. What you don't want is to have like a weight where you pour it, you want it to be sitting on the top surface. Let's do a little bit more. It will start to spread a little bit and then we'll put some red on. So again, good shake. let it drip off. If you wanted to use some of the acrylic Cobra colours on this to give some really bold you can as well but just thin them down quite a bit with water and then just using my little end I'm just going to create some kind of movement in here. Don't worry about getting it, you'll get contrast if you don't over mix it so you really want to do less is kind of more with this. And I've got that little area done and when you drop your leather on you want it to just sit on the surface and almost you don't want it to really move because those first few seconds are where the colour is going to really take. So I'm going to position it there and I'm just going to really gently push it down without actually moving it across just so that it's in contact with all those dyes. Give it a second or two. I've got 
my lids on while I do that. And then I'm going to lift it off. Okay, now it looks just a bit of a mess right now. Um, but this is where the excitement comes in. So with my handy piece of kitchen roll, move that slightly to one side a moment. So you can see there I was just using a baking tray to give me a shallow tray. And then if we take this down and off, we start to get the effect coming through. So hopefully I'll hold it up to camera a bit closer in a second. I'll just get as much of the top surface off as I can without smudging it too much. Okay, so what I'm now gonna do just to finish that is to just get a slightly damp cloth to just take off anything that's just sitting on the top surface. A very light work, it's just really to take off any more of the shaving foam and you don't want any of the colour sitting on the top, you want it to actually be on the leather and have interacted with the leather. So if I hold that up to camera, you can see a lovely swirly effect and there is a new key ring. So the, the foam gives quite a firm structure. Some foams are different. This was um, uh, a branded one. Um, so it's quite dense. Um, so that means you, you've, you're getting kind of more defined work. Um, the oil technique will give you a much more loose technique, so we'll just have a little go with that. So, I'm going to tip my oil you can use, um, vegetable oils, or um, I'm using Neat's Foot here. Um, Olive oil probably out of all the vegetable oils is probably the best one to use in terms of the leather. It's just spreading. I'm just going to lift it up slightly to keep it in a little puddle there. And the oil is heavy so it stays down and should create a sort of viscose a suspended surface. So again it's the same technique. So I'll go back to front this time. Whichever colour that you put on last is going to be the colour that comes in the closest contact if where they're laying up over each other, if that makes sense. So by doing this, if you do did a big dish of this oil and you tip the bottle down rather than doing these drops, you'll find that what happens is, oops, that's why it's handy to keep a cloth, the weight of the water will just drop down through the oil and you won't have enough um, sitting on the top surface. So it is important to just do this really slowly and to do a fairly thin mixture so that the weight of the pigment is, you want it just literally sitting on the top surface. When your drops go, if they overlap each other, that's all to the good, that's going to mix the colours a little bit more. You can see I've not used a lot. And for this, I'm gonna do this method here with the comb just to show the difference that you get. But I've used uh, the shaving foam to just flatten that out. So I'll just clear a bit of that off. So you can drag through. And I tend to find with this method you get much smaller little particles which you don't get with the foam method. So you get kind of a different look to it. 
again it's important to make sure that what you're doing is keeping on the top of the leather. I'm going to put a little bit more onto there. I think I was probably a bit too sparing. A little bit more of the yellow. And I will go back to my nail just so that I can get some of these bits going into a bit of more of a swirling. You can experiment with this and try deeper amounts of oil which would allow you to maybe move it around a little bit. What I'm trying to avoid is having too many dark clumps which are my red um, where it's a bit thick. Um, but let's see how that looks. Okay. So again I'm picking up my white leather. You probably want to make sure you've avoided any other contamination as well but for these purposes drop it on. Again with this you don't need to leave it on for long at all. You can see where it's left on there. Put that down on there. I'm just going to move that one out of the way. Now for this one with the oil I tend to rather than scrape because we had to get a lot of the foam off with the other method I tend to use more of a blotting method to lift the oil off the top. And I probably would let it dry a little because it's got a little bit of um, action going on it. And there you go. So each time I do it, I get different results. Um, so it's the sort of thing that's worth having a, a play and having a bit of fun with and seeing what colours and what patterns you get. And I'd love to see any of your results. So do post them up if you um, let me know how you get on. Um, but those are two very simple methods that you can do with things that you've got around the house or as part of your leather craft kit without getting too complicated with it. Um, people have asked about sealing it as well. So what I would do is when it's completely dry, I would seal it with Super Sheen um, or Resoline, um, which is a white, it comes out a bit white, but it dries completely clear and quite glossy. Um, and once it's dry, you can then buff it and you'll get a lovely um, glow and that will give a play of light which will really highlight all the marbling and the colours that you've got on it will make the colours really pop. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed that and I hope it leads you to do a little bit of experimenting and play.